Hey there everybody and welcome. Today I'm in Bryson City, North Carolina where I'm gonna ride the Polar Express. But before we get started, I'm Christy Evers, owner of Happily Evers After Vacations, your retreat, vacation, and conference specialist. And if you love to learn about travel destinations, get travel tips, deals, and reviews, then this channel is for you. Click that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell so you know when I post more amazing content just like this. Are you interested in riding the Polar Express and want to know how to make it the most enjoyable and seamless trip that it can possibly be? Well, great, you've come to the right place. And today I'm here to give you my top 10 tips for riding the Polar Express in Bryson City, North Carolina. If you'd like to see my detailed video of my personal experience riding the Polar Express, you can check out this video with this thumbnail. I'll be sure to put a link in the description so you can find it easily, or you can click on the card appearing above. Let's start our top 10 countdown at number 10, which is the train museum is included in the price of your Polar Express ticket. This is information I wish I knew before I went on my trip to Bryson City. It's not explained clearly in the Great Smoky Mountain Railroad website that admission to the train museum is included in your ticket price. I don't have any insider pictures or footage as a result because I didn't realize until after I got home that I could have been able to visit the museum at no extra cost. It's right there next to the train depot, so it's a great place to visit for train enthusiasts or to give you something to do while you're waiting for your train or just to find a place to spend some time if the weather doesn't cooperate. On to number nine. Don't rule out early November. The first Polar Express train ride sets out the first part of November. I know, I know, I know, I know. There's a good part of the world that frowns upon doing anything Christmassy before Thanksgiving. That being said, I need to let you know that there are a great many advantages to riding the Polar Express in early November before Thanksgiving rather than after. First, the weather is a lot nicer and you're going to be able to catch the tail end of the peak fall colors. It's beautiful. It's a gorgeous time of year to visit Bryson City. The weather is going to be so much more pleasant for outdoor explorations and walking around town. We were here on November 13th and we didn't even need more than a hoodie. Tip number eight, read and save the instruction email. Once you purchase your tickets, you'll receive an email confirmation of payment as well as important details. Save this email and refer to it before and during your trip. It contains important information such as parking, ticket pickup, what you need to do if you cancel, safety information, updates, what is permitted to take on board and what is not, as well as contact information. Now let's talk about tip number seven. Arrive at least one hour early. When you arrive at least an hour early, it allows plenty of time to park, pick up your tickets, find out where you'll be boarding, and don't worry, if things go smoothly, which they did for me, and you end up having extra time between your arrival and your train time, there's a bunch of cute shops, restaurants to grab a bite, a train museum that's included in the ticket price for no extra cost. There's so much to keep you busy while you wait. Number six, bring your holiday spirit. Woohoo! No Scrooges allowed. Well, that's another movie anyway. The servers and cast put on a really good show. They do a great job. But nothing beats good old audience participation. The more pajamas, cheers, singing, applause and response, the more fun it is for everyone. Don't be a wrench. Also another story, but anyway, you get the idea. Festive up, my fellow Polar Express believers. Tip number five, take the earlier train to watch the sunset. Take the later trains if you want full darkness. The current train schedule during this filming ran at 5, 6.40, and 8.20 p.m. If you're a sun chaser like me, you're going to want to take the 5 o'clock or earlier train if there's a time difference years from now where you're going to get the best of both worlds. 
You can zip across the North Carolina countryside, take in the rivers, streams, hills, country homes. Take it all in as the sun sets. Then enjoy the full North Pole illumination of lights and the darkness on the return. If you want the full effects of the festive lights, then maybe the later times will be best for you. It's beautiful either way. Number four, see the local sights. The Polar Express doesn't start its journey to the North Pole until the evening, so you're going to have the entire morning and afternoon to explore. After breakfast, we started our day by visiting the road to nowhere and did a three waterfall hike, which were both approximately 15 minutes from where we stayed in Bryson City and both literally a straight shot down the road from downtown. The road to nowhere looks a bit creepy and mysterious. Our highway leads to a tunnel where the road abruptly ends with nowhere else to go. I've seen pictures and heard about this spot for years, and I was thrilled to learn I was so close to it. I had to check it out. The drive to the tunnel is gorgeous, and it offers a couple nice lookover points as well. It's great for picture taking. Hey, psst, come here. Come on, closer. I'm gonna give you the lowdown on the road to nowhere. So here's the skill. In the 1930s and 1940s, the county gave up the majority of its private land to the government to create Montana Lake and the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Hundreds of people were forced to leave their communities that had been their homes for generations. As a matter of fact, the front desk clerk at the hotel where we stayed said her grandmother's family was among those who were forced to leave their homes. With the creation of the park, their homes were gone, and so was old Highway 288, the road to their communities. The old road was buried beneath Fontana Lake. The government promised to replace the highway with a new road, but due to environmental issues, construction was stopped with the road ending at the tunnel, approximately six miles to the park. It was eventually deemed too expensive, and the road work was never resumed. Swain County's citizens gave the unfinished Lakeview Drive its popular, albeit unofficial name, The Road to Nowhere, a broken promise. It is a beautiful drive though, I have to say. It took us a little less than five minutes to walk through the tunnel at a comfortable, unhurried pace. It did get a really dark in the middle, creepy. Take a flashlight or have your phone charged to use if, you know, you're not fond of the dark. Light is good. Apparently, there are free hugs offered. I don't recommend. Free hugs? Mm, I don't think so. After the road to nowhere, we still had time to make our way towards Deep Creek's Three Waterfall Loop in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It's a relatively easy hike, only a few miles straight down the road from Bryson City, that offers views of three different waterfalls. Start the loop by hiking the Juni Wink Falls Trail that offers a quaint footbridge taking you directly across the falls. The trail then leads to Tom Branch Falls, located on a spacious and flat trail with benches and a natural seating, which offers the perfect spot to sit and enjoy the scenery, maybe even a snack. The trail then takes you to Indian Creek Falls, tucked away behind the trees it has a small viewing area requiring steps to be taken in order to get a good view. Right, so there's some steps that are a little slippery down to Indian Creek. It doesn't look like there's a big spot to like sit and picnic here.
you can take the full scenic waterfall loop, which will take you to 11 different waterfalls. However, since you have a train to catch in the evening, you'll most likely want to take time to eat lunch, rest, and clean up before your trip to the North Pole. It's best to do the three waterfall hike, which is about, it's a little less than two and a half miles in distance and it's best to take at least two to three hours to enjoy this hike. Let's talk about tip number three. Shop and dine local and just overall be a responsible tourist. If you know me, you know I always encourage responsible tourism. Don't litter, be kind and courteous, and shop and dine local and tip generously. While this is a fun little trip for you, a good many townspeople rely on tourism dollars to put food on their tables and to pay their bills. Please respect this charming town and its friendly inhabitants. I mean, seriously, they are so friendly. I love them so much. Support them and respect this amazing town financially and personally and physically. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. We're only one tip away from the number one tip. What is number two? wear pajamas it's highly encouraged to wear pajamas for both young and old alike allow yourself to be immersed in the story and dress in pajamas just like the characters from the book in the polar express my daughter and i got all decked out we had matching pjs light up necklaces and festive headbands the more you get into it the more fun you'll have trust me just get into it. It's finally time for tip number one. Woohoo! Purchase tickets in advance. This is number one because if you don't have this tip in place, nothing else matters. Even though the Polar Express train rides don't begin until November, they sell out fast, much earlier. Last year, I waited too late and wasn't able to go. This year, I purchased my tickets in July to make sure I didn't miss out again. I highly suggest purchasing tickets before August. Thanks for joining in to hear about my top 10 tips for riding the Polar Express in Bryson City, North Carolina. Have you been before? Let me know if there's any tips that you think would be helpful for other people to know. Are you making plans to ride the Polar Express next year? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.